Stories given in this podcast are both true and fiction, and not intended for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Growing up in the mountains of North Georgia, camping, hiking, were things that made me and my brother so often it was second nature. So any time Ryan and I had a break from school, we had straight for the woods. We packed our gear, let our parents know where we were going, and that was that. No questions asked. We decided to camp about midway through Jack's River Trail in the Cahutta Wilderness. It's a trail that we know fairly well, as we used to have a few times before to practice long hikes. We arrived at the trailhead and around lunchtime parked the car, got our gear out, and headed into the woods. We passed a few hikers as we moved along, and we saw how the trail looked, and the answer was always the same, wet. Jack's River Trail probably crossed the river 50 times as it went along its 17 mile plus journey and with the colder temperatures of late fall settling is it harder for the trail to stay dry. We moved uh, deeper into the trail and started to look for a place to make camp. This is where Ryan and I made our first mistake. And I did say mistake. You see, Ryan and I have this rule. We don't camp near people if it is possible. Call us paranoid, but the last thing we want is for someone to drag us out of our tents in the woods, never to be seen again, or worse. So, we always camped a pretty decent ways off the trail, and in the area where it wasn't popular with overnight camping any kind of camping really roughly two and a half hours or so we found what we thought was a perfect place to set up for two nights that were that would be out so we went uh we went up to horseshoe bend and ventured about half a mile off the trail into a clearing and set up we built a teepee fire lay for that night and pitched our tents on either side after setting up and unloading, we decided, we decided to walk back to the trail and go exploring around some of many swimming holes Jack's River had to offer. This was during Thanksgiving break and I remember being surprised at how few people were on the trail. Maybe it was the weather or the fact that this was early in the week, but there didn't seem to be any anyone hiking much less staying at at night. After about 5 p.m., Ryan and I headed back to camp and started out our fire, make dinner, and setting up, setting in for the night. As soon as the sun began to set, the cold rushed in. We added more wood to the fire, sat close, and just enjoyed conversation. Ryan was two years behind me in school, and I was a senior, and he was a sophomore, but growing up we had always been close. We always hung out in the same groups, played the same sports, and had the same hobbies, etc. Around nine, we we were settled comfortably around the fire. I had just texted our mom to let them know that we were safe and getting ready for bed, and I remember we were talking about dreading going to our grandparents' house for Thanksgiving and having the same awkward conversations that we had each year for the family that we only saw on holidays when things started to get strange. We were no stranger to sounds in the woods and these sounds were full of animals from deer to black bear to even the random wild boar. If you were in the woods enough 
you will learn to distinguish certain sounds and what we were hearing I could only chalk up to as odd. What Ryan and I had heard was what sounded like someone sneaking around slowly just out of eyesight with an animal walking on four legs. You hear a tighter group of steps but what we were hearing sounded very distinct and what a human sounds like when walking slowly or trying to move without much, much effort. I remember we, we both pulled out our flashlights and shone it in the direction we felt the sounds were coming uh, from but what that is, the direction that was so weird. Whenever we would fix our lights on a spot, we thought the sound was coming from the location of the sound would suddenly change. It was as if there was multiple people walking around us. That's when the whistling started. At first I thought it was wind, and I remember thinking maybe the wind is just blowing. Leaves around hearing we were just hearing nothing but wilderness around us. Ryan looked at me and I asked if I was hearing that and I didn't answer and was trying to focus hard on each individual sound. Two consecutive notes with roughly a three to four second gap and then two more consecutive notes over and over again. Ryan kept asking if I heard that and I put my finger to my lips trying to keep him from talking. The fear that I felt was incredible. My jaw was tight, my, fur, my fist was clenched, knowing I wasn't ready for whatever was out there, as if it was anything at all. The whistling continued for what felt like forever, but thinking it through maybe five minutes when Ryan finally yelled out into the darkness, Hey! quiet the whistling stopped the crunching of the wood stopped nothing I was pissed I looked at Ryan with a what the hell kind of look and shrugged he shrugged his shoulders I had to do something he said I just shook my head he said that I just shook my head we sat there in silence for a few minutes when the woods erupted with noise. Something or someone was running in a circle around the campsite. The whistle came back. Two consecutive notes with the same three to four second gap and then two more consecutive notes. How could someone whistle this loudly without cracking while also running? I was done. I stood up shining my flashlight in all directions trying to catch a glimpse of whatever was screwing with us. Nothing. It felt close enough to touch, but we never saw a thing. That's when the movement stopped by the whistling was still constant. It was so loud, inhumanly loud. I looked at Ryan and told him to call the police. Now this is the part that I'll never forget. The part that I never like to talk about. While Ryan was on the phone with the dispatcher and telling them our location and what was going on, I stepped around the fire towards the, my tent. Inside my bag, I had a six inch fixed blade that I always carried and thought I would feel a bit more comfortable with it in my hand more than just my flashlight. As I went to unzip my tent, trying to keep my, my, my eyes toward the woods, I heard some movement directly in front of me. I swept my light in front of me, and for maybe like two seconds, I saw it. I saw it. Whatever this person or thing was, it was about five feet up in a tree. Everything about it, it was long. Its arms, its legs, its neck, its finger, 
everything was long and it was fast as soon as the light hit it it launched backwards off the tree I heard it land but it either jumped at an impossible distance or landed in a thicket because I heard it but I never saw it I don't think that I ever yelled out so loud and at least I tried and I ran back to where Ryan was and sat down he kept asking me what I'd saw and I couldn't answer hell I didn't know what it was exactly I just kept thinking about what I saw and maybe 10 minutes later we saw a couple of flashlight beams coming through the woods and there were about three guys who came into view asking if everything was okay. I settled a bit and started asking them and they seemed, uh, we had asked them if they had seen or heard anything. All they said was that they heard a lot of movement and then heard my scream and that's when they headed in our direction. I tried to explain what had happened without sounding crazy, but it didn't seem to work. One of the guys walked around a bit and came back and said he didn't see anything. Ryan told them that we called the police and roughly 30 minutes later, a park ranger showed up. Ryan and I tried explaining everything to him, but he just checked it up He chalked it up to either a curious animal or some campers trying to mess with us. Either way, Ryan and I decided we weren't staying the night. We packed our stuff up and walked out of the woods with the ranger. He took our statement and we got into our our car and drove home. Ryan and I don't talk about what happened that night, but either of us have been neither of us been back to Jack's River Trail and will probably never go back.